Hello, this is Mike Swanson. I run the website wallstreetwinner.com and the odds are that you're watching this video because you got an email from me telling you that it's up. Now, if you're not on my free email list, go below the description of this video and you'll find a link to join it and you'll get my free daily uh, stock market digest. Now, we've been seeing an interesting rally in the stock market and the bond market, really almost all markets uh, over the past six weeks. And is the rally real? What are the reasons for the rally? Because we've seen several rallies this year, one in March, uh, one from July to August or June to August that topped out and the market just crumbled. And when those rallies were happening, people were telling you that it was the real deal that, you know, we just had a correction and then the Federal Reserve would soon pivot uh, and, and start lowering interest rates. And this was a reason to be buying stocks. And some of these voices are coming out again. But this rally does seem to have one thing different than those previous rallies I had. And I'll show you that in a moment. But what I really want to talk about in this video is what are the bulls arguing now? And what I think is really the reasons for the market rally, and that can give us an idea of how long it's going to last. But first of all, here's a simple chart of the S&P 500. And you can see it's right at right below 4,100. It got down below down to 3,500 in October. So it's a good, you know, 600 point move already. And I'm uh, telling you, I don't really see signs that it's going to end this week. And uh, it's probably going to continue into the end of the year. Um, now, as I said in the video I did a week ago, uh, Sunday a week ago, I thought we could see a very short-lived dip in the first week of December because historically, the market does that. It typically rallies Thanksgiving week, then dips uh, the first week of December uh, to digest those gains, take a breather. And that breather often continues this week. Uh, so the market, I don't know, I'm not, you know, may not really do a whole lot uh, this week, uh, at least the S&P. There's bigger action now going on in, in gold and in, in silver. Uh, if you take a look at the price of silver, uh, you know, it, it closed above $23. Um, silver is outperforming the S&P 500. So I'm more interested in, 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 in buying in trading silver to beat the market because uh, it's doing better than the market. You can see that the relative strength ratio uh, on the bottom of this chart is trending up. It's been trending up since September, but it's up year to date. The price of silver has been outperforming S&P 500 uh, year to date. It's actually up uh, slightly for the year where the S&P 500 is still down, even with the recent rally. But what is different on this rally from October than the one in March and really the one in July is that bonds are rallying this time as the stock market is rallying. In March, they did not do that. In, in, in June, they just had a very weak bounce and they peaked out. Uh, this is TLT, which is, is an ETF for the 20-year treasury bond. But you can see this in LQD, the corporate bond ETF. It peaked out in the first week of August. The market continued higher about another two or three weeks. So this was warning you that rally was going to fizzle and it did and it collapsed. And now... At TLT and LQDs are rallying. In fact, in the video I did last week, I said that I thought uh, the market rally would stay intact. Uh, and the only thing that would really worry me is if these two ETFs uh, started to go down, which would mean the, the, the yields would be going up because they trade opposite the yields. Uh, they, 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 they form a negative divergence. As we saw in August, that has not happened. In fact, LQD has made a new high on this rally on Friday. And that's despite, despite the news item that morning that the job market remains fairly 
tight. More jobs were created uh, than had been expected. And that's seen as something that uh, is showing that the economy is not slowing down enough to significantly stop the Federal Reserve from hiking rates. But they are reducing the rate at that they are hiking at. And that's why the real reason the market is rallying, I, I believe. But one thing that is concerning people is the yield curve. The yield curve is inverted. Look, the Federal Reserve has a lot of control over short-term rates, less control on 10-year rates. And when the yields on the 10-year bonds go are lower than the short-term, that's an inverted yield curve. And historically, it's been an accurate predictor of a recession occurring within six to 12 months. Uh, the last time it did this was right before the COVID shutdowns of 2020. And it was a horrible uh, recession, obviously. So it's inverting. And it's, like I said, the, the, the single most accurate predictor. And this is an article on a mainstream news website, Axios. And I'm showing it to you to show you what the bulls are arguing because the bulls are become, the bull arguments in the market are the mainstream consensus because the mainstream media tends to echo what the bulls are saying because it's what most people want to hear. And these are the experts hired by Wall Street to talk, uh, that get on television, and what they say trickles over into the internet media, which Axios is. So here's the deal. What they're saying here is, yeah, they're pointing out the yield curve is 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 a real signal that's happening. It is normally a bear signal. However, it might just be bullish. <laughs> that's what they're going to say. Why? Well, here's what, why this matters. It's easy to be scared by the current state of the yield curve. Well, of course, because it's always predicted a recession. So they don't want you to be scared because they're going to say this time is different because that's what the bulls are saying. Believe in the rally. To forget the fact that all the fall, all the previous rallies of this year and the predictions of last year that all the bulls made turned into turned into dirt and turned out to be wrong. This time is different. Why are they saying it's different? Because they are predicting, and it's pure prediction based on nothing tangible that they have real evidence of that inflation is going to collapse completely. That's what this article is saying. In the second half of next year, uh, inflation is going to collapse. Uh, down to 2%. The Federal Reserve is going to make its projections for that 2% uh, inflation rate, while right now it's around 8 It's just going to collapse. Magic. And it's going to collapse without the economy going into recession. How is this going to happen? They don't say. What's important is they are predicting it. And it's these predictions that are driving people into buying stocks and bonds. This is the argument used to justify the current stock market rally. It is that we're not going to have a recession. The yield curve means nothing and inflation is going to vanish. And, and so it's kind of like a nirvana. And, and that's what they're saying, why they're buying stocks, why you should buy stocks. I think these are, that's, uh, it, you can't make trades and hold investments based on Predictions. I don't care who's making them, uh, and certainly not predictions that they, they're not. There's no real solid evidence being shown to you of why they're being made. And I'm not picking on this website because this is what's happening everywhere with the bull case. Now, what I think is really taking place. Well, first of all, the bull case has two dangers to it. One obvious: there's a recession, um, and, and then. Uh, when this rally ends, what will happen is people can be worried about earnings uh, falling and selling stocks uh, and so forth, because um, that's what happens. Um, the, the second danger is that inflation does not go away, as they're predicting. You know, it's, it's kind of, it, and I don't really know anyone seriously predicting it's going to fall to 2% within 12 months, but they are doing that. And, and so are these bulls on YouTube talking about deflation and uh, 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 Kathy Wood is one of them. But here's the thing. The, so those are two problems that if inflation doesn't go away and, and, and 
Prosecutor's recession completely would derail the bull case. It has nothing to do with what happens this month. I'm talking about in an, in the next couple of months, and I think one of those two things is very likely. Both of them, in fact, could actually happen. Um, with inflation, I don't think it's going to go down to two percent. Um, in fact, you know, some are saying the the Wall Street Journal had an article out this morning or this weekend's edition saying that inflation could fall to 5%. And if it does, we just want it to stay there uh, and, and, and at 5%, we can live with it. And, and the Fed can just raise their target at 2% up to 5%. Uh, but there, you know, that, that's one article and they're arguing that. So that's the that's another bull case, I guess. Of, of people, you know, where people can't even believe it's going to go to, it's going to vanish as we're being told. But here's, you know, the, in other words, I'm just not taking the arguments seriously that people are giving us to explain the stock market rally. Instead, I want to tell you something else is going on. Okay. We have seen the Federal Reserve become less hawkish. They are set to reduce the in, the uh, next uh, rate hike in, in, around December the 14th from 75 points to 50 points. That was uh, announced or suggested this was coming uh, five weeks ago. That is what initially sparked the stock market rally and the bond rally. And the plot of the trajectory of interest rate hikes is that we're going to get to 5% or five and a quarter uh, by February or March. And last week, Jerome Powell gave a speech in which he said that he wants to get interest rates up to that level. And he's, uh, I'm probably gonna put all this into an article before the end of the year, the exact quotes. Uh, so this is sort of a preview, but it's the thinking of the Federal Reserve is not, we just solved everything. And it's like the bull case. No, what they are saying is, look, we are hiking. This is what Powell said last week. We are hiking rates, and we know that interest rate hikes can cause recession. We don't want that to happen because we don't want to be forced to lower interest rates. So we want to get to like five percent, five and a quarter, and stop, and then let all these rate hikes working in the economy so we can pause without a recession taking place and then decide what to do after that. If inflation doesn't go away, you know, months after, at some point, they can start hiking again. Or if there is signs of real economic weakness, they can do a cut or two. But ideally, in that article or his speech, he implies that what he wants to do is get to five and a five and a quarter somewhere up there and just stop for as long as he can and hope that inflation comes down. Um, and the Wall Street Journal article this morning is suggesting they'd like to see it get down to five and they consider that to be a victory. So that's the goal. That's the true goal of Fed monetary policy. Not, oh, we're trying to help the stock market go up and then we're going to cut just to keep the rally going. They don't care about the stock market. They don't want to raise rates too much because they're afraid the economy would completely buckle and they'd have to be lowering. They don't want to get in that situation. That's why the pause is coming, not because they know inflation is going away. They're afraid it's not, frankly. Uh, so what does this mean for the stock market? Um, first of all, what is going on? As I said, the bulls were buying on, on and the, the, the rally was sparked when the Fed, when it became clear that they're going to be hiking 50 in December instead of 75. So the pace of the rate hikes, you know, the the, the, the foot on the pedal is coming, you know, the pressure on the pedal is going off. We're going from 60 miles an hour down to 30. And by February, March, we're going to be stopped. And in the minds of bulls, that's a pivot. So what they're doing is they're buying that. But they're buying ahead of the eventual pause. You know, traders, computer algorithms, they buy the rumor. They buy ahead of the news. And the news that they're buying ahead of is the day 
in which the Fed will have a meeting and they'll say, we're raising by a quarter and we're not going to hike anymore. We're pausing. That's what they're buying into. And that day is coming uh, in February or March. It's either the beginning of February or the um, the um, March 22nd. This is the March 22nd meeting. And it's these are the fund futures contracts or the bond market is pricing in as rates going to five and a quarter by March the 22nd. And that would be the last rate hike. So this rally, if it's going to continue to be, and I think it is likely going to be a buy the rumor, sell the news story of the day of the last hike on this cycle. Uh, people are going to keep the bulls, uh, the traders, the smart money, the computer programs, the hedge funds, they're buying ahead of the day that the, the so-called pivot of, 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 of we're not, not hiking happens. Now, what happens after that? Probably the news is going to get sold, be fully priced in, the story will be over, and then the and, and then that the chapter will be turned to a new story. And that will be is in, uh, the uh, economic weakness or inflation not going away as much as had been hoped for by so many. So we're in a rally of hopes. The hopes are going to continue. The, the people are going to rationalize it. But in the end, smart money, the traders front run news. They're front running at action. The bulls are trying to rationalize and dream up scenarios of why the rally can go on forever. That's what they do. But we'll have to be looking for the day it ends you know, when this news materializes next year. So that that's what I think we're looking forward to the next four months here, basically, when it comes to the big picture in the markets. Now, the U.S. dollar has taken a hit uh, with the stock market rally uh, or with the Fed um, downgrading from 75 rate hikes to 25. The dollar has rolled over. That has sparked buying in gold and silver. And I think that's going to continue. And a, pit, and a pause and pivot, uh, if you want to call it that, when it happens, it will just help gold and silver out even more because it'll mean that the, if, if inflation isn't falling to two or dramatically down, it's it's showing that the Fed's fight against inflation has failed. And I think that's going to be one of the stories of next year. So this is what, these are the storylines going across. So you've heard the bull scenario. You've heard what the Fed is thinking. You've heard the two dangers of the markets uh, against the bull scenario. And you've heard my thoughts of what I think is going to happen in the next four months. Gold, silver, uh, dollar weakness, foreign markets beating the stock market, or the S&P 500. And the most people in the United States continuing to chase the tech stocks, continue to listen to people like Kathy Wood say, you know, oh, oh, this is all going to materialize. Inflation's going away and it's going to be nirvana. So anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, and um, like this video and I'll give you more videos. And if this is the first time you see me on YouTube, Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell next to it. YouTube will send you an alert as soon as the next video is up.